sharing you with something that is not nails, but is definitely using nail products. I am going to be taking a Tesla key card and I'm going to dissolve it and take out the little filament and the little chip card that is inside the key card, and I'm going to be placing them inside an array, inside a ring that is made completely out of acrylic. So the only two end parts of this design is acrylic, the little filament out of the card, and gel top coat. That's it. And this actually works. It fits my dad. It's for his new Tesla Model Y, and he was very excited about it. And so I'm just, I really love showing this to you. I might end up making more of these for other members of our family. So if you like watching me make this little ring and you want to see different styles, definitely let me know in the description box below in case I do happen to make more of them. And I will see you guys next time. Bye! So if anybody wants to know what that crash was, that was my cat tipping over a drink. So here is the Tesla key card. We're going to place it into something that is acetone proof. We're using just like a metal, um, I don't know, industrial bucket thing. And then we're going to pour in some acetone. So just take and dump in acetone enough to completely cover the key card. Once that's in there, we're going to give it just a little bit of time. After 10 minutes, it started to feel a bit rubbery and then the little Tesla like logo would peel right off. So we're gonna give that a little bit more time after another 10 minutes soaking. So this is gonna be 20 minutes at this point. <laughs> we're going to see that it's gonna start peeling off in layers. It was so weird. It was so much fun just watching this like dissolve like that. It's gonna kind of poke yeah, at it. it's cool. It does look cool, doesn't it, Melody? Neat. Yeah, everything is just sort of peeling off. You can start to see one of those little pieces of wire visible. You don't wanna pick at it too much just because you don't want it to start to actually like break apart. You wanna kind of let it do its own thing. After 30 minutes of soaking, you can see that it's coming apart even more. You can really see those wires showing through. You can actually kind of like pull it apart a little bit. Don't do it too much. Um, I was kind of aggressive and wasn't an issue, but I probably shouldn't have been quite so aggressive with peeling this off. Let the acetone do its job. But you can kind of just see that it comes apart really easily. If you want to, you can leave it for like another, you know, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, however long it takes for it to really come apart without running the risk of damaging that little filament. So once it's all done, you can completely take it out. I would say mine took about, I don't know, 35 to 40 minutes, mainly because I was really inking on it at the end there. It does still work though. So after you have that, you're going to find the place on your ring sizer that you want the ring to be. So you're going to have to either measure a ring that fits or have I like the, blue color. the blue color of the ring sizer. It's metallic. Once you have it wrapped in foil at the size that you want it, press it down really, really well so the foil is smooth. I like to use the back of my fingernail. Otherwise, like a brush cover works really well. And then you can just kind of imagine where you want that ring to be, where you want the little that little chip card to be. That's the minimum width of your ring. So kind of hold the little chip up to the place on the ring sizer and get an idea of how big it's going to be. So that when you sculpt a very thin, clear base of acrylic across the ring, the ring sizer where you're, you know, the size you want it to be, it's a, at least a little bit wider than what that chip card is. You want it to be... Imagine that you can always take some off of it, so make it a little bit exaggerated in size. So keep sculpting that all the way around. Make sure it's very thin. You don't want it to be too thick. If it is too thick, it's going to end up making the whole ring really chunky looking. And you want it to be kind of thin and elegant, very steampunk-like, especially if you leave it clear. What we've been talking about is doing some that were like, because you can do any color of acrylic. You could do like a galaxy pattern or something really fun with it hot pink glitter, you know, that's what I was trying to convince my husband to go with his hot pink glitter. Um, he didn't go for it. <laughs> Would that be funny if daddy had a hot pink glittery ring? Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to wrap the wires around themselves to kind of create that little like loop. It can be bigger than the ring, but it can't be smaller. Then you're going to hold it taut in one spot across the clear acrylic base and then just sort of tack it down in two spots. So hold it really tight and then on one side of where the chip card is, just place a little tiny bead of acrylic just to hold those wires exactly where they are. And then go to the other side and do the same exact thing. So just hold, hold it tight and then place that little bit of clear acrylic. And right now I'm using a, it's a 4D monomer. So it's one that, or a 3D monomer, I always say 4D, a 3D monomer. So it cures really quickly. If you do have extra length on your wires, just kind of twist them around on themselves. Make sure you do not have any of them break on you, but just gently twist them. And then once you have like a nice little tight twist so that the wires are about the same length as the ring is around so that there's not a much looseness, they kind of just fit in, press that down so that you can really without much thickness encapsulate the entire ring secure them down again in just a couple spaces places so before you go through and you actually like completely encapsulate the whole thing you want to just make sure that it's secured the wires are secured down in several spots so that they aren't going to go anywhere 
I'm going to secure down that little bit of a <laughs> knot in the back, if you will. I actually think that little knot looks really cool. It's one of my favorite parts is just that extra little bit of wire that's twisted around on itself. I think it looks a little bit decorative. Um, we're going to hold all that down, making sure that it all stays really nice and flush. Like I said, you can't have any of these wires get broken or compromised. They have to um, stay... Yes, honey? What is that thing? That is the little thing that turns on Uppa's car. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So you have to make sure that they don't break or get, um, like I said, compromised. So just make sure that they stay intact. Be gentle with them. Be nice to them. They aren't going to break too terribly easily, but I don't know. You don't want to risk it. You don't want to be this far in and have them break and have to buy a new key card to try it again. So when you get to the front, you're going to kind of just tuck those little wires underneath the face of that um, chip, kind of straighten it out so it's nice and in the center, and then secure it down as well. So just take and really carefully get it in place. Hold everything together, press anything down. If any little wires want to like stick up, you got to make sure that you tuck them down so that they aren't going to be like out and exposed from the ring. Do the same thing on the other side. I highly recommend wearing a pair of gloves for this. If you aren't somebody that usually touches your acrylic, you know, if you think that you don't have any skin contact, <laughs> you might not feel so nece uh, might not feel the necess necessity. Whoo, that was tough for my face. The necessity to wear the gloves, but in this particular circumstance, because you're going to be pressing the wires in and just making sure that they're all tucked into the right place, you will probably want to wear a pair of gloves. And when you're wearing gloves. The one thing that I think is interesting, this is just a side note, gloves are only rated for an hour. For the most part, the thickness that nitrile gloves are, they're only good for an hour. So if you're working on something for a long period of time, you need to switch your gloves out often. So the good thing, like one thing that I would recommend is say you have to get up to go to the bathroom or something along those lines, get up, switch your gloves, um, wash your hands, go to the bathroom, wash your hands again, put on a new pair of gloves. It's kind of the system. Um, just to make sure that you are maintaining that nice, um, clean glove system, because if they, the nitrile will break down and eventually let chemical exposure in. So now we're just going to go through after all that little bit of a impromptu glove lesson, we're going to just be encapsulating this ring fairly thickly. So you want to make sure you have extra acrylic on it so that when you go through it and you file it, you have room to file. You don't want to be concerned that you're going to file into those little filaments. You want to make sure that you have extra space so that as you're filing it, you can shape it and get the ring exactly how you want it. It can look smooth. It can look perfect. And it doesn't, you know, you're not going, oh, I can't file anymore right there because I'm going to break through the acrylic. You want to make sure that there's plenty around the entire thing that that doesn't even pop into your head. Of course, it is going to pop into your head because you don't want to worry about it or you don't want to accidentally do that. But you know, just, you know what I mean? You get where I'm going with this. Extra is kind of a good thing in this circumstance. Once the acrylic is completely cured and nice and hard and you can click on it and it'll go like this, when you click on it with your nail, then you can take it off the ring sizer and we can start filing it into shape with an e-file. Use a medium grit. I won't go any further or any coarser than medium. So either a fine or a medium coarseness um, bit, barrel bit. I wouldn't recommend using one that has a safety edge on it for this. You kind of want that crispness and sometimes a safety edge um, e-file bit. They just don't leave quite as crisp of lines Don't all the way all the way around. And you're right, there is my dusty hand once again. And we're just going to go through. I'm going to start by filing it on the two sides so that I have a nice parallel line if you look at it from the front or the sides. And once you kind of have that where it looks good, then you're going to want to take a hand file actually and go through and really make sure that those are straight. So with your hand file, you're just going to take, you can do a lot of work with an e-file. You can do quite a bit. And depending on how proficient you are with an e-file, you can get it just about flawless with it. But at some point you are going to want to go through and just go over this with a hand file to make sure. Once you have those edges looking really nice and straight, you can go through and do the sides too so that you can go like around the flat portion of the ring, just around in circles. Hold the ring with your hand so that a finger is inside. Hopefully you don't have, you're making a ring that's bigger than what that your fingers are. It looks like snow. It does look like snow, little acrylic snow. So we're just going to go around and around and around in circles, going through it, taking off fine layers at a time, not trying to rush the process. If anybody's wondering what that little bright spot is on the inside of the ring that you see every once in a while, that's a piece of foil that got stuck on the inside of the ring that I will file out in a minute. I just saw it again. Um, we'll get that out eventually, but for right now, I'm not too worried about it. So just keep going around in circles. It looks a little thick to me right now, but that's still okay because we have more filing to do and I'm not too worried about it. So there you can see, I'm just taking my file and I'm kind of gently filing out that piece of foil that got stuck 
on the inside of the ring. Nothing too crazy. If you want, you can bevel the inside edges and kind of pull them out. It'll make it a little more comfortable. I'm going to try to dust this ring off a little bit and get rid of some of that extra, extra little bits of acrylic. And then using hand file, I'm going to just really smooth out all of the edges. I love using a hand file for this type of a thing, just because I think it smooths things out a little bit straighter than what a an e-file can do. Once you're happy with the shape of your ring, go through and just sort of soften the edges a little bit. Again, use a hand file, just kind of buff them. So just go through and add an angle, file every single edge so that it isn't quite near. It's just not so, it's not a right angle, so it's not gonna be quite as sharp. It's gonna be more comfortable to wear. Just go through and do that. Once you have it done, make sure that whoever's going to be wearing this is going to try it on. If it's too small, you can gently file out a little bit from the inside. If it's too big, you can add just a little bit of acrylic in a couple spots on the inside and that'll make it feel like it fits, fits a little bit tighter. So here we go. Here's what it looks like so far. After whoever's going to be wearing it has had a try on with it, then you're gonna to wanna to go through and bevel the inside. This is something that I would recommend doing after a try on because if you do have to say make it smaller, you don't wanna be taking more out of the inside. Let's go through and bevel the inside edges just a little bit more. Like I said, that makes it so much more comfortable. I'm also going to go through and doing a little bit more of that on the outside edges too. This is a fine to medium grit. It's a two in one bit that is a little bit um, worn out, I guess you could say. So it's really not that coarse anymore, but it does a really good job of just smoothing things out like that. Place it back on your ring sizer once it's all been sized and fitted to whoever's going to be wearing it. Clean it really well with a bit of acetone. And then you're going to apply a layer of gel sealer all the way around it. I like to use the ring sizer just as a holder in this particular circumstance. No other reason than to just hold it in place so that I don't have to be touching it during this process. Once it is completely gel top coated, put that into your lamp to cure and turn it continuously while it's in there so that it can cure on all sides. And then it's done. Isn't that so cool? I think it looks so steampunk and just so amazing. I am in love with the way it turned out. And I also love the fact that it works. Like I said, if you guys are interested in seeing any more of these rings, it can be a little more like artsy and less... I don't know, functional, if you if you will. I will definitely keep that in mind. And if I happen to make more, I will record them for you and I will see you guys next time. Bye.